Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Shake Shack Panics as first lawsuit uses new anti-DEI Supreme Court ruling. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from America First Legal, America First Legal files federal civil rights complaint against Shake Shack for illegal race and sex discrimination. This is the first use of the new Supreme Court ruling in Muldrow versus City of St. Louis, making it easier to sue companies for discrimination. Compare this to what the Department of Justice is doing. From today.com, Sheets chain accused of racial discrimination in its hiring process. Sheets is a convenience store chain about 700 locations getting sued by the federal government for supposedly discriminating against certain races. And here's what that discrimination supposedly actually was. From hrdive.com, Sheets unlawfully rejected indigenous and black candidates due to criminal records, according to the EEOC. The candidates experienced a significant disparate impact from Sheets' criminal justice history probe, according to the agency. So they're being accused of discriminating against people because they have criminal backgrounds. And they happen to collectively have a certain skin color or be indigenous backgrounds. But the real discrimination is actually going on over at Shake Shack. From America First Legal, America First Legal Center for Legal Equality filed a federal civil rights complaint with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission for alleged race and sex discrimination conducted under the guise of so-called diversity, equity, and inclusion. AFL also sent a cease and desist letter to the CEO and board of directors of Shake Shack demanding the company end its discriminatory employment practices in violation of the Federal Civil Rights Act of 1964. The Supreme Court's recent ruling in Muldrow v. City of St. Louis held that employers violate Title VII when they change the terms or conditions of employment because of race, sex, religion, or national origin. In these contexts, the employee need not suffer significant negative effects so long as the affected individual establishes that he or she has suffered at least some degree of harm. Furthermore, the court held that terms and conditions of employment in the Title VII context are not limited to the narrow contractual sense, which opens up Title VII to include transfers, changes in assignments or responsibilities, and other work-related identifiable harms that are motivated by the prohibited characteristics. Prohibited characteristics means you can't discriminate based on race, sex, religion, or national origin. Shake Shack appears to be discriminating on the basis of race and sex to promote its radical DEI agenda. To that end, it has established diversity goals as it aims to unlawfully consider protected characteristics of applicants, employees, and even its board of directors. Shake Shack filed a proxy statement, which is a public notice for investors, with the SEC in May 2023, in which it described its five-year diversity targets that focus attention on women and people of color specifically, as the company looks to, quote, match the demographics of its workforce and the country at large. It's important to understand racial quotas are illegal in the United States, and they have been since the Supreme Court ruled that quotas were unconstitutional in 1978. It doesn't matter what the race is. You can't have a racial quota, so you can't say, well, I want half the people here to be white. I want half the people here to be Asian. You can't do that. And you certainly can't say, I want half the people to be black. You can't have any racial quotas. Shake Shack went on in their filing and said, specifically by 2025, we are targeting 50% of our Shack leadership and 30% of our home office leadership roles to be filled by people of color. Shake Shack further explains that the board's overall diversity is a significant consideration in the director nomination process. To that end, Shake Shack monitors the diversity of its board by tracking the race and ethnicity and gender identity of its members. The board of directors are helping to make very important decisions. You certainly do not want people concerned with the gender identity of the board members when they're supposed to be focused on serious business. Shake Shack defines diversity as race, ethnicity, gender, geography, sexual orientation, age, nationality, religious beliefs, socioeconomic status, physical and or mental capabilities, and even admits that these protected characteristics are one of the additional selection criteria it considers when evaluating candidates for its board of directors. These unlawful workforce diversity goals date back to at least 2021. 
In June 2023, Shake Shack shared an update on its DEI goals titled, quote, our continued action in workplace diversity, equity, and inclusion, supply chain, and sustainability initiatives. Since establishing our 2025 diversity goals, we've increased the representation of women and people of color in Shack leadership by 33% and 18%. Our continued focus on the attraction, development, and retention of diverse leadership moves us closer to achieving our broader goals. This week, Shake Shack published its 2023 Standing for Something Good report, which describes its sustainability and diversity initiatives through the lens of race, color, national origin, and sex. Shake Shack has committed to implementing strategies that attract diverse talent and continues to explore new recruiting channels and partnerships to engage diverse talent. In this recent report, Shake Shack reiterates targeting a specific race, color, and sex-based workforce makeup. Quote, by 2025, we are targeting 50% of Shack leadership and 30% of home office leadership roles filled by people of color while also achieving gender parity across all leadership roles. Are these people really focused on the right things? If you're at Shake Shack, are you focused on the right things? Are you delivering great shakes to people? Are you giving people great hamburgers or cheeseburgers that they can love and tell all their friends about? Or are you focused on trying to create gender parity in your diversity and inclusion goals? It's completely ridiculous. And of course, there's no way to hire people that are qualified and single out people based on their race or their gender or sexual preferences or gender identities. It's complete nonsense. It just means when they focus on the wrong things, the company will not perform as well and they burn up shareholders' investor dollars and damage the share price. Running a business is hard enough without focusing on nonsensical things. Shake Shack continues. Shake Shack provides curated resources to support team members who transition at work and has programs that specifically highlight over 30 Shake Shack women and advance gender equality and empower all women and girls, including maintaining a women's leadership development program. And of course, if you're not aware of this, a women's leadership program is not something a company should or could legally have. You can't only develop a certain gender, regardless of gender identity. It has nothing to do with that. You can't select advancement programs, fund and operate advancement programs at the company to select out certain people based on race or gender or skin color, and then use those programs to give people skills on that selected criteria. You just legally can't be doing that. In June 2023, Shake Shack shared its previous version of the Stand for Something Good report. In the report, Shake Shack described that it targets a workforce as diverse as the communities we serve and references the percentage of its workforce that are women or people of color. Shake Shack also reiterated its commitment to race and sex-based workforce goals. Idris Stover, Shake Shack's Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, is quoted in the report saying that sharing our five-year targets helps hold us accountable to cultivate a leadership team that is diverse, but most importantly, one that is positioned to support our future growth and success. Those two things completely don't fit together. It doesn't matter what the skin color is of the people that work at the company. It matters really what their ability is and their dedication to those positions. The report lists Shake Shack's 2022 People Milestones, in which Shake Shack celebrated increasing the percentage of both internal promotions and leadership positions going to women and people of color, helping Shake Shack make progress toward achieving our five-year diversity targets. As part of Shake Shack's commitment to a highly diverse workforce at all levels of the company, Shake Shack required at least two underrepresented minorities, women or people of color, to be considered and interviewed when hiring for leadership positions in our shacks and home office. This discriminatory hiring policy is just as unlawful here as in the NFL's Rooney Rule. This was invented at the NFL to seek more diverse candidates at the NFL, but it's not legal. It patently violates civil rights law that prohibits hiring practices that limit, segregate, or classify applicants for employment because of race, color, and or sex. As with all unlawful discrimination, Shake Shack's race and sex-based employment practices are harmful and wrong. Title VII protects employees from changes in their employment based on their race, sex, color, religion, or national origin. America First Legal continues to stand for equal treatment under the law and a country where one's opportunity is based on skills and achievement, not on immutable characteristics, like your skin color or your race. Gene Hamilton, America First Legal Vice President and General Counsel, had this to say, Quote, Americans of all backgrounds and experiences reject the notion that any American should ever be treated differently just because of their skin color. Yet Shake Shack appears to have taken the radical position that instead of hiring based on merit and aptitude, 
It wants to pick winners and losers based on immutable characteristics they can't control. We will always boldly fight for true equality of opportunity and merit-based principles, according to Gene Hamilton. I have a lot of respect for the America First legal people. They're filing complaints. They're filing lawsuits. They've really made a difference and changed the culture. They force companies to make changes and second guess these discriminatory practices. Even the Washington Post often mentions America First legal anytime this subject comes up. From the Washington Post, DEI lives on after Supreme Court ruling, but critics see an opening. And this is the opening, this first action against Shake Shack. But there will be many more actions based on this new Supreme Court decision. Legal experts largely agreed the Muldrow decision lowered the bar in workplace bias claims but views diverged on how that standard would play out in DEI cases. Axios sees the issue too, how a new decision from the Supreme Court complicates the DEI landscape. The court's decision in Muldrow versus City of St. Louis comes as DEI efforts inside companies, in government offices, and at universities are under attack. It's a tricky situation, they say. The decision will likely be good for workers who believe they've been discriminated against on the basis of sex or race. Yet it could open the door to make it easier for anti-DEI activists or normal people that don't want to see their country ruined over racism to challenge programs that they view as discriminatory, where they discriminate against you because they're actually discriminatory. And that could, over the long term, affect workers benefiting from such programs. This one Supreme Court ruling didn't kill DEI. It damaged it severely and did open the door to a massive number of complaints and lawsuits. Shake Shack's only the first one. And here's what that Supreme Court ruling was about. Police Sergeant Jaitanya Claiborne Muldrow filed a lawsuit under the federal civil rights law alleging she was transferred out of a job as a plainclothes officer into a worse role where she had to put on a uniform and work weekends, for example, so that a man could take her place. But because she didn't suffer a hit to her pay, lower courts said there was no significant harm to merit remedy from a court. The Supreme Court disagreed, saying that you only need to show some kind of harm not material harm, not a major hit to your pay. If you were discriminated against because of your gender, like she's claiming, Jaytonia is claiming, I'm a woman, so they told me I wasn't appropriate for this job anymore, and they put a man in to replace me, you can sue over that, according to the Supreme Court. Discrimination based on gender, race, sexual preferences, things like that, is not allowed. And as you can see from the Shake Shack description, they're doing it all over the place. They're not going to win on this one. But I want you to see what the federal government now is pursuing with Sheets and why they're after this company for supposedly discriminating against black candidates and indigenous candidates. From HR Dive, Maryland-based Sheets, with over 700 locations, disproportionately screened out American Indian and Alaska Native, black and multiracial applicants during the hiring process, according to the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. The company maintained a long-standing practice of screening out candidates due to prior justice system involvement, including but not limited to convictions. So they screened out some people who have been arrested and or convicted and or been to jail or prison. You would think a company would be allowed to do something like that. The conduct violated Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, EEOC alleged, which prohibits facially neutral employment practices that cause a discriminatory impact because of race when those practices are not job-related and consistent with business necessity or where alternative practices with less discriminatory impact are available. So if you're looking at 25 applications and you're trying to pick someone for a job, are you really going to hire the person who has been to jail four times or been to prison twice or been arrested for disorderly conduct when you're supposed to be running a convenience store maybe in the middle of the night by yourself, maybe with one other employee, maybe not, handling cash and things like that. I guess it might depend on what you were arrested and went to prison for, but you would think that would be up to the employer. No, according to the federal government, it's not up to the employer who you hire. The suit alleges, among other claims, that black candidates experienced a significant disparate impact from the company's criminal justice history probe, as they comprise a disproportionately high number of the total number of job applicants whom defendants have refused to hire. The background check vendor keeps records of its screenings. The court document noted that black job applicants failed the screenings at a rate greater than 14.5%. Indigenous candidates failed at 13%. And multiracial candidates failed at around 13.5%. Whereas white applicants failed at a rate below 8%. So they're using a background company to process applications. Here's how this works. You fill out an application. 
a thousand more people fill out an application. Those applications get processed by an outside company. For some reason, that company is tracking people based on race. I don't know why they should be doing that. They probably shouldn't be, but who knows? Maybe it's a federal law. So the vendor gets those applications and then the employer sheets at its own expense, spends money and has to do research like a private detective, figuring out the backgrounds of the people on the applications. Do you have a criminal history? Is there a job reference they need to call and talk to a former employer? They do all of that. They do it all at their own expense. And then the results come back. They don't say, listen, screen out the black guys. Hey, you know what? That guy looks Native American to me. Just screen out the Native Americans. They're not doing that. The outside vendor wouldn't do a thing like that. The company's not doing a thing like that. They're just running through a process and trying to get the best candidates they can. It's hard enough to find people to work now as it is. They don't have public statements like Shake Shack saying, we want to have 50% of our people be this skin color, 30% of our people be that gender. They're not doing any of that. And still they're in trouble with the federal government. Shake Shack isn't, they should be, but Sheets is, and they shouldn't be. Quote, Sheets does not tolerate discrimination of any kind. Diversity and inclusion are essential parts of who we are, according to Nick Ruffner, PR manager for Sheets. We take these allegations seriously. We've attempted to work with the EOC for nearly eight years to find common ground and resolve this dispute. Eight years to resolve this dispute? What's the dispute? Yes, some people go through the criminal justice system and they're treated unfairly. Yeah, everybody does deserve a second chance. But at the same time, you know, your history is what your history is. If I was Sheets, I would have to run my business the same way. You have to get people who you know you can rely on. And if you have to make a choice between five people and only one of those people hasn't been in jail, I don't care what their skin color is, I probably would hire that guy if they're the right person for the job. And finally, Sheet says, we will address the claims in court when the time comes. Notably, this claim comes in April, which is the second chance hiring month as noted by the U.S. Department of Justice. For employers interested in qualified workers who have criminal records, talent experts offer a few best practices for second chance hiring. One previously emphasized to HR Dive, the importance of inclusive HR policies, such as time to report to parole officers. So that's another problem. It's not just, oh, I don't want to hire this guy because he's robbed people before, he's gotten caught robbing people before, he's got a criminal background. I need to prioritize him in the schedule for him to be able to leave whenever he needs to leave or she can leave whenever she has to leave to be able to see her parole officer. She's out on parole, literally out on parole, and I need to work my schedules around there. And you know what? It's difficult to manage these retail schedules. People don't always show up for work when they need to show up for work. That's another whole issue. But additionally, they said, a background check should be seen as a piece of paper with information on it that is stripped of a job candidate's full real life human experience. So don't look at a job application. Don't look at a background check. Just hire the person, what, based on their skin color? I don't know what they're expecting people to do. Quote, federal law mandates that employment practices causing a disparate impact because of race or other protected classifications must be shown by the employer to be necessary to ensure the safe and efficient performance of the particular jobs at issue. Tell that to Shake Shack. That's not how Shake Shack is doing business. They're choosing people exclusively based on their skin color or their gender. But the safe and performance of job functions are not even enough. Quote, even when such necessity is proven, the practice remains unlawful if there's an alternative practice available that is comparably effective in achieving the employer's goals, but causes less discriminatory effect. What about the cost of that? Do I, as an employer, need to create a whole separate operating system to work around disparate impact because a certain number of people, whether they're this gender or that skin color, happen to represent people that were part of a larger prison population? The federal government has to learn to be practical with people. But Shake Shack is about to learn what it means to get caught discriminating against people based on their skin color and their gender. This is the first significant legal action against the company using the new Supreme Court ruling establishing that harm to employees does not have to be material. There only has to be some harm. The bar has been lowered and Shake Shack and companies like Shake Shack are in trouble. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.